Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Groß, a neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research founder of KetoSwiss. Yeah, so as you already know, metabolism is at the core at some migraine pathophysiology. And I developed four different pillars that I think are at the core at fixing migraine metabolism. And those different pillars, those four pillars are one, stabilizing blood glucose. The second is decreasing oxidative stress and increasing endogenous antioxidant capacity. The third is optimizing micronutrients. And the fourth is providing the brain with an alternative energy substrate to glucose, which includes ketone bodies, but also butyrate, which can be produced by the gut microbiome. Depending on the patient, that is most important. For example, one patient may only need pillar one and two, whereas the others only one and three, whereas some severe patients may need to work on all of these four pillars. The beauty of the different pillar approach is that you can actually measure whether you have a problem in these areas, or if you cannot measure, you don't have the funds, you can simply experiment and see whether working on these individual pillars makes you feel better. And in the following videos, we'll dive deep into what you can do to fix the four different pillars and the different strategies that you can try yourself from the comfort of your own home in a master migraine. The first pillar when trying to master a migraine is stabilizing blood glucose. And that really entails at the very first step, going on a low carb diet or a low GI, low glycemic index diet. In migraine, what you often have is reactive hypoglycemia, which basically means when you have carbohydrates, lots of carbohydrates or sugars at once, your blood sugar skyrockets, the insulin secretion is delayed and then too strong so that afterwards, too much of the blood sugar is taken out of the blood leading to hypoglycemia so you have hyperglycemia followed by hypoglycemia then you're hungry you eat more sugar and the same thing starts over and over again in that way that basically means that your body's glucose thermostat is broken very often in migraine and that can lead to a roller coaster in blood sugar which will also mean that your vital organs including the brain are deprived of energy so the first thing that we want to achieve is get out of this vicious circle of hyper and hypoglycemia. And the best way to do this is ingesting foods that are low glycemic index, focusing on healthy fats, healthy proteins, healthy carbohydrates that do not lead to a huge spike in blood glucose. A stable blood sugar has many potential positive effects, which means better energy supply to your organs, as we've already said, less shakiness, brain fog, sickness, night sweats, night waking, nightmares, um, this slump in the afternoon, but also migraine in the morning and afternoon when you have these dips in energy very often. It also reduces oxidative stress because a huge increase in glucose also leads to more free radicals after. It has a positive effect on hormone production because we already know that estrogen, progesterone and insulin are tightly related and coupled. So some people even with hormonal migraine may experience some relief when they go on a low carbohydrate diet. Going low carb also may have a positive influence on electrolyte balance because you know that glycogen, for example, is bound to water. And so ion channels and the excitability of the brain can be impacted with a lower glucose level, which is a benefit as well. As a second, way to stabilize blood glucose is not only what you ingest but also what is happening inside of your body now few of you may be aware that cortisol and stress hormones have a huge impact on blood glucose levels now if you want to keep those stable to supply your vital organs in your brain with constant energy you also need to work on your stress levels now that includes many things outside of the physical or mental stress that you may be associating with stress this also includes caffeine in the morning, for example, that raises cortisol and can lead to changes in blood glucose. So test if that is the case. Bad sleep will definitely also raise your, um, your stress levels and also your glucose as well. Then time of the day, when do you actually have your carbohydrates? You're more insensitive at night than in the morning, for example. Then we have dehydration. Dehydration has an impact on blood sugar levels. Also other things like artificial sweeteners, some of them will have an insulin release and may drop your blood glucose lower than you would want to. Sunburn is a problem. Medications may contain glucose. Then we have an infection. Any infection, viral, bacterial, 
is stress for the body and will have an impact on blood glucose. And then we have the dawn phenomena. If you wake up, even if you're fasted, blood glucose, if you're stressed in the morning, will also go up due to the time of day. The other things that you may not be necessarily connecting to blood glucose is actually exercise. Exercise tremendously raises blood glucose while you're at it and may also lead to a crash after if you're not doing it right. And then we have sauna. Sauna actually in many ways imitates exercise. So it can also lead to a rise in blood glucose. And uh, so does cold exposure and emotional or mental stress, as we already talked about in the beginning, can be tremendously stressful and hence raising adrenaline, cortisol and blood glucose in the end. Fasting is another way to control or keep blood glucose in check. Now, in migraine, fasting really is a double-edged sword. We know that in healthy people, fasting can have, can have tremendous health benefits, but in migraine, it can also be one of the most potent migraine triggers. And it really depends on your metabolic flexibility, how much toxins you have stored in your fat tissues. But if done right and in a homeostatic window or in your in your window of ability, fasting can be beneficial, potentially even for the migraine. You may have heard of positive consequences of fasting, such as increased insulin sensitivity, beneficial other homeostatic regulations, uh, weight loss, decreased inflammation. All of these uh, can come with fasting. It can also be very tricky for migraine patients. So in that case, it's very, very important. Really listen to your body and really be honest about, does it make you feel better? Does it trigger a migraine or does it make you feel worse? Now, there are different types of fasting, and I'm going to recommend a few that could be compatible even for the migraine. The number one suggestion here would be intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting means that you fast for a certain period of time during the day and then you don't. So this could be, for example, even a 12 hour window during the day where you're not eating. That is manageable for most people and 12 hours where you are eating. This is already the start of being considered intermittent fasting because you're not eating around the clock. You can always make that window longer over time and this will increase your insulin sensitivity and your ability to use carbohydrates after and might even put you in the very slight context of ketosis as well. There are other ways of intermittent fasting which is alternate fasting where you reduce your eating window just every second day, fasting where you just eat one meal a day, OMAD, um, one meal a day, which I may not recommend for the migraine because it can be very stressful. And there's other ways of fasting, such as prolonged fasts, which I also want to mention here because I don't think it fits with most migraine patients' lifestyles or genetics. Now, the other two things to watch out for, the last two items when trying to control blood sugar levels, is one, allergens. This is one thing that is so often overlooked. Food allergies will change blood glucose levels because it is very stressful for the body. So if you suspect that one food makes you feel very badly or you may be allergic, check your blood glucose. If you have huge variations, you may not actually tolerate that food. And there's tests out there already that check for food allergens. Now, the last one is watching out for artificial sweeteners, especially if you go on a low carb or even a ketogenic diet and lifestyle. A lot of people compensate with huge amounts of artificial sweeteners. Now, some of them are actually raising insulin. Some of them you might be more intolerable to than others. Experiment here and make sure that they do not influence your blood glucose levels too much. In that case, you would be expecting a drop if it's causing too much insulin release. And with that, you should be well equipped to start testing and stabilizing your blood glucose in order to fuel your organs and especially your brain with adequate amounts of energy. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Groß, a neuroscientist, PhD, clinical research owner of Keto Swiss.